Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. Our first Patreon goal is 100 Patreon subscribers for $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait. For more information on our Patreon, please go check it out in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Serens, and today we have a really special guest. Something that I'm going to definitely do more of next year is I'm going to cover the snakehead world. Uh, there's a tournament scene that actually has some really cool things that has to do with that. The VKAE, or Virginia Kayak Angler Elites. Uh, I had I had one of their OG members on, the guy that helped create it on earlier this year, and that episode did extremely well. And so I thought a really cool thing would be having the angler of the year on from this year, Elmer Sousa. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. I, I really appreciate you donating some time. I'm um, not a not a problem, man. And thanks for having me on your show. I got to do a little Instagram creeping uh, on you a little bit, <laughs> dude. I think it is so badass looking at guys like you and Nolan Miner that go out in a damn kayak out in like the bay and do some absolutely hardcore fishing. What got you into that? Oh, yeah. Um. Well, I'm born and raised in Hawaii, so it's life to me, and um, I wanted to try something different besides the Pacific and try different uh, species of saltwater. So that made me um, branch out that way and get back to like the ocean life, if that makes sense, you know? How long have you been but, on the um, East Coast for? Um, going on 12 plus years now, I've been away from home. That's completely yeah. different. Like what is the, the style of fishing when you, I'm assuming a lot of the offshore stuff you do is like the Chesapeake Bay, stuff like that compared to the Pacific ocean. So believe it or not, I didn't really fish with a rod and reel as much until I moved up here in Virginia. Oh, okay. So I did was a free dive, just free dive in Hawaii. I mean, I did a little fishing here and there, but not as much as I do here with a rod and reel in Virginia, but my forte in Hawaii was just diving, free diving and spear fishing for my catch. <laughs> Your balls have to be massive. I don't know how you come to the surface <laughs> to do that. I mean, I saw, I mean, you probably saw the, that thing went viral of that tiger shark taking a slash of that oh. kayak. Oh, yes. And that was in Hawaii as well. <laughs> did, did you never think about that? Did that cross your mind when you lived out there? Um, It does cross your mind, but um, we... We try not to think of it when we're in the water. We have like a superstition ways of like, if you don't f fear them, then they'll like tend to back off from you. But if they smell fear from you, then they'll kind of like pick at you or start some trouble or, you know, come by you and whatnot, but stuff like that. But other than that, they don't bother when they we're, when we're around them, they'll just come scope us out and then just kind of venture off you were you've been in the water one of those bad boys holy shit a few times my oh. first encounter ah. yeah my <laughs> my first encounter believe it or not i was i almost crapped my pants <laughs> and my i was diving with my cousins and um he just seen me dart across the water when he seen that he already knew i seen a shark that was my first time seeing one but with, when you wear these goggles, they'll make a three a three foot shark look like a six foot shark. Oh, so uh, yeah, a small reef shark that was like three foot looked like a six foot shark to me. I'm like, God damn, I gotta go. <laughs> but uh, when my cousin seen that, and we got to shore at the end of the day, he told me not not to ever do that again. Just dart and run off because they'll tend that you're injured, and that's when they'll attack you most likely because you're you look like an injured prey or something like that you know so it, it's best to stay calm calm in the water and always keep your eyes on them and have your spear gun or your your sling ready you know just just to poke them out the way usually if they get that close you just poke them they'll go away but i haven't got that close to poke them and do that so Jeez, yeah that's, that's... <laughs> I, I'm always amazed by that spearfishing stuff. I, I used to go down. I, I basically like lived in the Keys when I was a kid. And you always deal with taxmen down there. 
Oh, yeah. I, I can't imagine how bad it is now. But then going from that lifestyle of spear fishing, free diving, what, how did kayaking even get on your radar when you got over here? Um, so when I first moved up here, you know, I needed to find something to do besides going to the gym. Um, so my brother was going to high school at the time. He's like, hey, there's, you know, there's this lake slash beach area right down the road from my school. So I was like, okay, went to check it out. And then that's where I first started getting to fish in Virginia. It's called right here in Stafford called a quiet beach landing. Um, that's where I first started just off the rocks, off the bank. Um, st first started catfishing because um, a co co-worker told me about that place. He said an easy catch would be catfish. And then started off that. And next, you know, I started just YouTubing because other people was telling me what kind of other species was in that water as far as like bass, crappie and other other fish like that. So I just started doing research and watching YouTube's how to catch those types of fish in those waters. And I bought my first spinning rod at Walmart, got some gear and started off basic with single worms and all that. But uh, yeah, so I just started off bass fishing, got into it. And then next thing you know, I'm at the same area where I first started. I was using a swim bait and I got hit by something big and next you know I pulled up a snakehead and then so that I just started fishing a lot down there and how I got into kayak fishing was just I just seen other people out there with kayaks boat and you know what I need to get out there and try to explore more grounds or be out there where the fish are at so yeah basically that's how I started just seeing other people out there catching fish on kayaks and a boat was too much for me to get at the time. So like a kayak was a perfect in my budget to get on the water. So that's how basically I started off kayak fishing. I think my first boat was a, a filled in stream kayak. That's a throwback. Dude. Yeah. That's a real throwback. <laughs> Start, well, actually before that, me and my brother-in-law, we, we went half on a Coleman canoe. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. <laughs> Coleman canoe. Rigged that sucker out with outriggers and everything. We started fishing on it, of course. And then one day, we actually flipped on it. <laughs> we took our first dip. And then my brother-in-law, he did not want to go back on that thing no more. And it was kind of only me on the canoe. And at times, it was like, it was too much, too big, too heavy for me to unload and whatnot. So that's when I switched to a kayak, which was a filled and stream and whatnot yeah how did you get into the tournament scene tournament scene um well really snakeheads man because uh after like catching bass and all that and snakehead came in and that was my main fish to catch because that first one just got me hooked did more research on it and how to catch and this and that and um just becoming a avid snakehead fisherman and it just grew popular and popular and it's you know tournaments were popping up and i'm like hey i might as well do snakehead tournaments because i love catching them and give it a shot and ever since then i'll be joining here and there tournaments in maryland stafford or whenever i can or i got the time to do it and then is that the same time that you got into the saltwater stuff too? Um, I mean, not to creep on yeah. your page, but I mean, Cobia, Striper, no, Sheep's Head, yeah. it's insane. Yeah, so um, I've been doing the freshwater scene for quite a long time. And then and then um, I've been doing, I've, I've been gaining a lot of friends and great friends. And, and now we're all in one group, the VKAE. And we just, we just branched out a couple of years ago. We started off up the Rappahan like the towards the upper Rappahannock where the brackish water meets the fresh and uh we started just doing that saltwater fishing there catching a uh, sea trout red drum and we did that for like a nice good solid year and then we kept talking about hey man and we've seen all these catches down in Virginia Beach and we just seen that and we looked at each other like, man, we need to do that. We need to try to get out there. So one day we like, and let's give it a shot. And the first time we went out there, it wasn't, a, we was going for sheephead. I skunked out, but it was a learning experience. I got to feel 
how the current was and you know just the big water you get a feel for it and stuff like that so that was a cool experience and then second time i went i caught my first two sheep's head and the very first one i caught man they're like a different type of fighting fish on a rod and reel real i think well the hardest fighting fish i caught in virginia yet on a rod and reel and ever since that one it's got me hooked and then over the years and months, we just try to tackle other things that we see people catching. We're like, man, we'll do that. We'll just feed off that and try to go target different species every time we go down there. But Dude, our main ones was sheephead and This thing is massive. Like that. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Is, this, yeah, your, um, is that, this your PB? PB, by far the PB and probably the, will be hard to break. That year, I remember that day, July. Right before July 3rd, to be in fact, uh, right before Independence Day, we went down, me and my uh, couple buddies, and that day was just stellar, man. Uh, I caught I caught my limit, which is four sheeps per day, per person, and the last one was a behemoth, man, as you can see, um, 26 and a half inches and uh, 15 pounds, to be in fact. I got my certification up here for it, but yep, 15 pounds flat. And for being my first year chasing them, that's that's a pretty good catch right there. <laughs> what? Okay, I need to know before we get into the tournament stuff. What was the story when you caught this thing? I mean, you have to have a story around this fish catch. So I'm um, just um, what we use is uh these jigs called sweeper jigs. I don't know if you heard of them. I got some there. I could show. Yeah, you, you can go I'll... grab one if you, if you got it close. That's fine. Yeah. Uh huh. Jeez, guys, this thing is immense. That's the thing is, I don't think people really understand in this area, like the Chesapeake Bay is a great fishery that no one talks about. Right. So this is a, a sweeper jig right here. Oh, wow. And uh, what we use to, um, we use fiddler crabs, live, live fiddler crabs, and we just hook them through the body, you know, like so. There's a way to hook them, but y'all can learn it from YouTube as I did. But uh, And it would be just... Um, I was just on this pylon, man, because I already had caught one off that pylon. So I went back to that pylon, rebait, put a fresh fiddler crab. And all you do is, you know, you just drop your bait down and you just, like, I'll start off at like 10 foot down the pylon. And then if there's nothing that will hit it in 10 foot, you just like let go every five foot and keep working down mm. and, until you get a hit. And then, um, I did that about two times. I started, like what I said, I started off at 10 foot and then I did get that hit around like 15, 20 feet. And when these fish bite, they call them convicts because they like to steal your bait a lot and their 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 bite is real subtle. It's not like a thump or a yank. It's like you'll feel pressure on your line and they kind of like pull down almost. And um, yeah, I felt that. So I felt that pressure seen kind of my line moving i was like oh man i got a fish so instead of like some people are different but how i like to set my hook on these sheep's head i don't set the hook i just gradually lift up okay. pressure and then just lift up while i'm reeling reeling too just keeping my rod tip bent and then next you know you he'll feel he'll get hooked and he'll just feel the pressure and he'll just goes straight down starts digging and um with the hobies for that type of fishing are great because you can hit the reverse or with the hobie 360 i can just reverse quickly that way when you're fighting the fish because they tend to like to go run back to the pylons so you want to reverse kind of quickly and reel at the same time and get them way up getting them away off the pylon and try to land them but man it took me about a good minute to land him minute and 20 seconds but it was an intense fight um i had my buddy next to me it was like guiding me how, how to reel it in so i won't lose the fish at first we thought um we thought it was a bull red because how it was fighting and peeling drag my 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 reel was just screaming man he's like man it might be a bull red and next you know i got him up where i could see him i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> My heart started pounding. Like it couldn't really fit in my net too. Like I got a oh video my on my Instagram. I don't know if you've seen it, but it was intense. It was an intense fight, and 
by far the best fish I fought yet to this day. Did you think it was a bull red though yourself? What did you think when you when you leaned back into it? I thought it was because how he was fighting and pulling, like, oh man, this might be a bull. But I wish I well, either way I was happy with the outcome, but But you wanted a bull red? But I wanted a bull red because that's one fish on my list I want to check off. Hopefully this year, if not, I'll keep trying. But <laughs> How do you guys go out there? Because I, I know I'm getting more and more questions now as I get bigger of, of kayak fishing and, and doing more adventurous stuff. And I feel like you don't just go to Dick Sporting Goods, you buy something, and then you go out to like a bridge in the Chesapeake. What kind of equipment generically do you use? Um, you just need a um, really good... Uh, Spinning rods that I look when I go, I like to bring spinning rods instead of bait casters. But I do have one for the salt water, but just like medium heavy rod with a great spinning reel 25 to 3000 size. Um, for the sheep head, man, you don't really need that much of a strong rear. I use 20 pound braid, okay. I mean, fit, yeah, 20 pound braid with like 20 pound leader, fluorocarbon leader. Um, and it holds up with big sheep heads and stuff like that. Dude, that's crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, this really does give you a really good resume on how to fish in different circumstances. And this is probably something that's really served you well on the tournament front. Um, so going into it uh, with the tournament situation, just for this year specifically, what, what was your thoughts going into the first tournament of the year just throughout the season? Um, first thought was... Um, was to um try to do great, you know, like with this new club that my great friend Giuseppe started. Um, we've I don't know, man. But I just I just had like a mindset of doing my just doing my best in the tournament series, however I can. But yeah, because after the after the first one. Um, what, where were you mentally? Cause I, I think it's so interesting when you claim an angler of the year, when you have, you know, more than just one stop. And I believe for your series, you had four stops. Yeah. F- four stops. So the first one, of course, I knew that waters pretty well. It was at a, a quiet Creek and we launched from Willow Landing Marina. Um, I didn't do too well on that one. I placed seventh place on that one. I did catch couple nice fish but I wasn't happy with the outcome because I knew that water and I was expected to be on the top <laughs> but hey stuff happens in tournaments but um after that tournament man I was like I kind of let that get to me a little but um what do you mean because like, and, guys, right and for you guys that you don't know, just so I can run down the schedule, you had the snake trail number one was in April, Potomac tributaries, snakehead trail yeah. number two, Rappahannock in May, three was in June on the Potomac, and then you had the, the mm-hmm. classic in July. So you get the first one done, you're like, shit, you know, how do you mm-hmm. get yourself mentally back on track getting into the next event? Um, Just sticking to what I know, like, because the first one, I, I try to venture out and do new things and... I told my, myself for the for the uh, for the rest of the tournaments, just do what you've been doing, just like how you would go out and just fish for fun, instead of trying to like stick with a game plan, which I did. But I kind of just been myself when I went out the the last three, I believe, the last three trials. But um, I just told myself just do what you know best and just do the regular stuff, not not try to do extra, and go go to the spots you know where you have caught them before because most likely they're going to be there you just you don't know how to find them and stuff and then that worked for me man just being being out there do what i do on the regular as i was fishing as if i was fishing regular and it kind of paid off you know like i wasn't really trying to go for angler of the year um it just so happened that after i I've just been consistent placing after the second tournament. I I believe I got second. Yeah, second, I think. And ever since, I've just been consistent and s- stuck into the same ways I've been doing. Because you got second at the, at the second event, correct? Or was it the third event you got second place? 
Uh, second, I, I believe that was Port Royal. Port yeah. Royal. Uh huh. W- walk us through that day. Like, did you practice before you went there, or did you just YOLO a new spot? No. Nah, so I kind of winged it out. They didn't do no pre fishing because I like, I'm I work six days a week, so most of the times I I can only fish during the evening or on my days off, which is Wednesdays. But uh, I was busy and I couldn't pre fish. So, and I fished there before. So I, I remember some spots where to go, and like what I said, I just stuck to the spots I knew and went there. But you believe it or not, Port Royal, the first six hours, man, I was skunked out. Did not six have a, hours? Dang. Yeah, I did not have a fish on the board. I was so frustrated. I almost wanted to quit, but I stuck it out. Like I was going back and forth, back and forth, and the last hour and a half, I believe, I went to this spot I knew where I caught snakeheads before, and I was like, I told myself, let's make another run up there and try it out. And then you know, I make another run up there, and it paid off, man. Like, in in one hour, I caught like maybe seven fish. It, Holy! It's, it's like wow. It like it like turned on for some reason. Um, it was like incoming tide as well. And this one stretch, I just worked with a with a swim bait, man. Um, with a paddle tail with a underspin swim bait hook, weedless, and I just was just picking picking the pockets because there's this long grass line, timbers hanging off, and kind of like pockets in the area. And I just stuck it out after the first one I caught. It was a nice, I believe, if I remember, it was like maybe 27, 28. It's a good way to start it. Yeah, and it gave me confidence. I was like, oh, man. And my friend just, my friend just left too, and he caught, he caught maybe three there before I pulled up. And he's like, man, you can have this spot. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, man, I, I just need a fish to put on the board. And next I caught that first one, and I kind of like, because I first started off top water on that stretch. Nothing was going on. I maybe had a follow. I was like, okay. After that follow, like, I, he didn't take it. I kind of knew, like, I had to switch up and throw something different. Picked up the swim bait rod. Sure enough, man, first pocket I threw at, I got smacked. Mm. Set the hook, and then that so happened to be the 28 incher. And then from that, from that point on, I just decided to just dissect that whole stretch, every pocket I could find. Smart. And just keep throwing and throwing because I only had limits of time left. And then every other pocket, man, I bet I was getting yanked, man, bites and bites. And I went from, I don't know, I probably was in the bottom 10 to all the way up to second place of shootout almost. Were you watching first. the score the whole day or do you just like? Um, I will not the whole day, but like I kind of was, you know, keeping my eye on it and, um, and the last hour, they shut it off. So I can't see. I, I only can submit fish. So I'm like, I'm submitting as much as fish as I can. And I didn't I didn't even know I came in second place until the ceremony. So Dude. it made it even it, it, it made it even more ex, like exciting and you know, more happy for me. Like, God damn. Like it, it was it was crazy. <laughs> the last hour and a half was crazy and what it you- paid off though. What do you think it was? Was it just the tide had to get right for the snakehead? Did they move into I the think, area? Yeah, it had to get right. Like snakeheads, it is a tide game with these fish. I mean, certain tides you would catch them. Um, like I said, it was the incoming tide because earlier that day it was dead low. You could see the mud stumps, nothing. You can just see everything exposed. When I came back there that day, everything was underwater. So. Like all that stuff I seen mud, it was covered, and um, yeah, just that tide. Tide plays a big thing in a snakehead game. Um, it just turned it on, man. For some reason, I'm I'm not sure why. But that's got to give you a lot of confidence when you're going into the next one. That I mean, that's got to just oh, yeah. you got to be riding a high. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it gave me a lot of confidence, man. Um, leading to the rest of the series, uh just kept telling myself stick out stick to your original game plan and uh 
and stick what you know and go where you know, you know, instead of trying to, because like sometimes if you come up with a game, it sometimes it will pay off. Sometimes it won't, and that's the risk you take, you know, it's just like gambling. But uh, I believe just knowing, stick to what you know and it will pay off your original, your original plan and stuff. So what were you going to do going into the next one? What was your thought process? Um, try to, try to mimic the areas I found the fish in the last couple of tournaments, you know, cause every, every place we fish was a different area. And, and sometimes like you almost have to switch up your style of fishing to adapt to that area where we was fishing. But, um, the next one I did pre-fish, I think the next one was at Pohick, Pohick Bay. And that was a tough one. Um, I did pre-fish there once, and uh, it was only for a few hours because that place is crap. People would tell you that that place is crap. But uh, um, I kind of sort of had a game plan, but I kind of had somebody, a buddy, that told me a place where to go. So I kind of got help that one. You know, but I ain't, I ain't going to lie, but a friend told me where they usually catch them. So I decided to take her word for it and uh it paid off for me um there's only i think there's only two snake two or three snake heads caught maybe Damn. even four yeah wow. i think that one snake i only caught one and that was i think i had it first place for a little bit until the very last hour somebody caught two in the last hour and then bumped me down how pressured when I think a bass tournament on a river, tidal river, let's just say, lots mm-hmm. of running and gunning, tons of places that you can go for them. For a snakehead tournament, do you feel like it's a very condensed field, like everyone's on top of each other, or can you guys spread out? Um, just depends where, but these past couple of where everybody is spread out, not too much people on top of each other and stuff like that. But I don't think so at all. Not at all condensed feeling, you know. Everybody's like a free for all. I never do have like Pete. the closest person I would fish or to is probably like twenty yards away, you know, from me, but even more, but yeah. Now do all tidal fisheries fish the same for snakehead or are they all unique? Most mostly the same but unique in a way because of that area. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like different, how would I say, different, like, grounds for them. You know, because one place I'll be fishing, like, timber, and next I'll be fishing flats, hydrilla flats, and other places I'll be fishing, like, pads and stuff, you know, like uh, splatter docks and all that. So different, everywhere is different. Are are you looking in practice – for just one bite and then you're like i'm basing it on here or are you wanting six or seven bites like how how are you when are you comfortable like all right this is the spot i'm going to commit to in the tournament um i would like to like if i get a few bites there and like a lot of action i would i would stay you know i'll pick that spot you know that's how i would go with it if i get a like one of three bites there, that would be a good spot for me, you know, especially over here in Virginia. Um, you don't have that many, uh, what do you call it? But yeah, that's how I, sorry, I just brain farted. That's no, you're good. basically how I choose, choose the spot. <laughs> no, cause that makes sense. Cause like in, in bass fishing and stuff, it's usually you want at least a couple of bites before you commit to it. But I didn't know a snakeheads, mm-hmm. if you're just wanting, if you just see one and you're like, good, this is the spot I'm going to pick. Or if you are going to want three or four bites before you settle down and say like, yeah, this is where I want to run in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Now you went with an underspin swim bait. Was that just divine intervention? Was that something that you've always been throwing? That that's an interesting adjustment to go to. No, um, for Rappahannock, man, um, for like underspins and spinnerbait, they tend to do well in that river for some reason. That's weird. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it is weird. I don't have an exp- explanation for it, but that's um, that's how usually people catch them in that river. 
I mean, of course, top the top water, but it's mainly you hear them catching them off swim bait, you know, with swim bait hooks or underspin or spinner baits like that. Um, because I think the, yeah. the generic population that ever Google snakehead is like literally you only catch them on a frog and that's it. And and I know from bass fishing that's bullshit because I've caught them on no. everything. <laughs> oh yeah, you, can, you catch them on everything. Like when I like when I said where where I was bank fishing, uh, one day I just took my friends out there. We just started bank fishing for and try to catch whatever. And believe it or not, I had a brush hog, a weightless brush hog on like really. Uh, yeah, with a um, a warm hook, an EWG warm hook. And I just sling that sucker out in the grass pad, rolled it over a hole in the grass mat, let that sucker sink, and boom, I thought I had a bass. I set that hook, it came up to be a 13-pound snakehead on a brush hog. Dude. And, but you, you can catch them on anything, man. Like, I caught them on Baby One Minus, Top Water, like Spooks, all types, man. <laughs> generally when you're fishing for these things, it, it, is it usually back up in the stuff? Because it, it just seems like the bigger ones come from isolate. Like they're, they're way back in the thick of things, especially like the spatter docks. And when I look yeah. on anyone's Instagram, y'all are way the hell back up in there. It's never on the outer edge where bass fishermen generally are. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, typically most, that's where you want to go is closest to the bank edge and uh, getting into the thick. And sometimes try to get to the skinny waters as you can because that's where they like to hang out and whatnot. Um, but you can catch them off like how bass fishermen would catch bass off like grass points and all that. Because uh, this past tournament I did, this past Sunday, was called the Heroes on the Water tournament. And we fished out of Madam Warman Creek. And I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's just a lane going in and out. Mm-hmm. and you basically fish the edges, depending on the tide, and and that's how I caught my snakeheads. Believe it or not, off little grass points and stuff like that, and uh, that comes off little creek area, and the grass points is right there. Uh, that's where I caught them, and I did pretty well this past Sunday. I played second in that tournament. Damn, dude, go you! Um, that's yeah. awesome. Uh-huh. Like, but, when did you yeah, know but, you had AOI? Like I, I need like did you have a did you know going into the tournament like I got this thing wrapped up I just got to catch my limit or was it again like in the last hour? Yeah, so um, second to the last tournament, that's when I really started to like check the point system of the AOI and I had a pretty big lead and um, going into the championship round, I was like, all I have to do is catch my bag, my five min, my five fish limit, and I secure it and lock it in. And uh, which I did within the, the first hour and a half, I was out there, caught five fish off the bat. And then, Dude, that's so cool. No stress, uh-huh. no nothing. <laughs> yeah, it was nice knowing that, like, like when I said, I wasn't really going for the, why it just so happened. I was just consistent every other tournament after the first one and place in the top three in every one. And uh, I was really trying to get for that first place trophy to complete the set i have <laughs> but uh, i'll take the Y trophy it looks just as good as the first place one but uh that was my goal is to win one this year and uh seem to struggle with that but i'm i'm happy with the outcome i'm i'm having pretty a pretty solid uh tournament year snakehead tournament year angler so, of the year dude i mean that's I think a lot of people will say winning a tournament is easier than AOI because it is the consistency mm-hmm. that you show up every day and you're right there every time. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's really freaking awesome, especially with the snakehead where you don't have this backlog of information to go off of like right. you do with so many other species. You guys are basically writing the book right now with, with how to, yes. how to target and everything. <sighs> What is your what does the rest of your season look like right now? Are you are you planning on fishing a bunch of other different derbies like the one you just did this past weekend, or are you going to be winding down and just do saltwater? I think it's I think this past tournament was maybe the last, unless something really draws my attention. Um, I kind of like the I kind of like only doing the tournaments where you only launch at one place, same launch spot. I um, why that's the only stuff. Because um, 
over the years with uh, snakehead tournaments like monthly and the virtual thing, there has been a lot of mishaps and cheating going around. And uh, of course, there's a lot of people is going to find a way to cheat. But I feel like how we, the VK runs their tournament is the same launch, same spot. It's less, it blocks out that type of things, you know. And um, it's just less stress and to think about it. But yeah, that's one reason why, well, the reason why I like just doing the same launch spot tournament. That's good. And I'll do the, like, I'm in the monthly one for the VKE, but I just did it just to support the club, you know. I probably won't put any more fish on the board as of this month. I already got two, but I probably just wind down and pay attention to, this, to the saltwater, man. Um, to be in fact, I, I might go tomorrow <laughs> on my day off. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's, it's a 50 50. I'm, I'm still shopping for a car. Um, so uh. it's a 50 50, but uh, I might go to the dealership or go down to CBBT. <laughs> What's running right now, salt wise? Is it, is it specs and uh, redfish? Um, redfish and specs is always going to be there, but at the bridge, people are wanting to go, of course, for sheets, but uh, Right now, the cobias are coming closer to the pylons. So, like, I got some friends that live down there told me, like, this time of the year, August, is your, probably your best chance to catching one by the bridge. And um, there's already been reports them, of them being catch, and I've seen some videos as well. What is but, that uh, fight like? Um, I can't tell you because the one I caught was, like, a juvenile. I mean, he, he gave me a little burst but to actually feel the real fight you, you you at least need to hook up on a 40 50 plus inch oh my God. but but the, from what the stories i heard man they you, you're along for a ride you're gonna get drug man i mean that's insane drug, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah that's my goal man to catch a keeper one and i'll uh, get a bull red this year so is that all in your fishing bucket list you have any more yes um just those as of right now, I want to tackle those first and then, yeah, not, then probably try, you know, I got, I got a lot of things I want to do. Like if I was back at home, I'll be out there catching collegiate fish too, probably fighting with a tiger shark as well. <laughs> Dude, that scares the hell out of me. I, I've seen some of those but, uh, guys that are, I think it's Belize or wherever where they're doing blue, blue marlin and shit from a kayak. It's like, come on. That's like, you're getting almost borderline asinine there with that. I mean, I. But that's that's my goal, though, to get out there in the blue water. <sighs> Dude, that's insane. Um, I mean, w w last thing before before I, I let you go here, and thank you so much for your time. Like, w what are some oh, no tips problem. you could give some people just for snakehead fishing for the first time? Um, really, man, I'll do some research. I'll reach out to. There's many groups. I mean, snakehead groups that a lot of people will share info with, them, but. Uh, I mean, my greatest test, man, is just uh, stick like stick what you what you would know like you would do bass fishing, but just tend to hit the banks closer to the bank areas and stuff like that. Of course, top water would be the main one, but yeah, just uh, stick to the basics, and you will probably catch one. Do you upgrade your gear at all? I mean, I'm assuming you're not using ten pound fluorocarbon to like an eight pound liter. Uh, oh yeah, with gear. I like to some. I started off with thirty pound braid, Power Pro, or you know, Suffix stuff like that. Um, but I went up to fifty because I did break Damn. off multiple times with thirty. And with now doing the tournaments, you you want to secure that fish and pull it out the thickest, and you know, you just want to bring it to the boat. But in my opinion, fifty, you don't have to worry about anything breaking, nothing like that. You'll get the fish in, but. Um, yeah, and a, just a strong backbone, heavy rod. Is that I stick with a heavy, heavy rod, seven foot. Um, bait caster or spinning? Mm -hmm. Uh, I do bait caster. I started off with spinning, but not strictly snakehead fishing is bait caster for me. Okay, and I just I just run Shimano DCs. I I don't I don't go with the Pacific like oh you need this gray ratio for frog and whatever I got I use. <laughs> I'll make it work. But and typically, it, a, a heavy rod will get it out there. Is that the same thing for your swim bait too? Which is basically the same setup. 
Yeah, same setup, man. I'll just tie right on. I don't go, I don't have a specific style of swim bait rod to use. You know how like people, they, they got like chatter bait rods. I don't, I don't got that. It's just straight seven foot heavy rod. I got a Shimano reel with 50 pound braid on it. And that's how I do it. I just stick to one thing and it works out for me, man. That's um, crazy. Yeah. Dude, th- like, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Is there anyone we can give a shout out to? Um, I'd just like to give a shout out to Delaware Paddle Sports. Um, they had um, my new sponsor. They had just picked me up a month ago to put me on the fishing team. And um, I would like to give a shout out to my brothers at the VKAE and um, everyone who's watching this. And to you as well, Thomas. Thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Thank you for coming on the show and just talking about you know the snakehead fishing and the, and the saltwater fishing. These are two things that people have been wanting me to get into way more, and I'm trying to trying to do that because I'm. So, if you hook a sheep's head on a damn kayak, that's fun as hell when it's that big. I mean, I don't care. Oh yeah, it looks addicting. <laughs> oh, it will. It's like like what they say with the snakeheads: the first one and your hook. It's same with the sheep's head. If you get a nice sheep head and he gives you a ride oh you're hooked <laughs> what is your most memorable saltwater catch it would have to be that day dude. Really? <laughs> that sheep head yeah it just that day because that's the biggest saltwater fish i caught yet in virginia so oh damn. that made it actually yeah made it extra special that day and uh Yep. <laughs> well, we're going to have to have you on again and, and talk more about the saltwater stuff as the different bites and the striper start running as well. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Because that, that's going to be an absolutely fun. Again, guys, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, everything we talked about will be linked in the episode description, including Delaware kayaks and and then, of course, the uh, kayaking tournament. In, in, ah, because acronyms kill me. V-K-A-E. <laughs> that's why I have that written right there so I don't butcher that. All that will be linked in the episode description. Like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.